Um, it feels very good. It feels very good. The show went well. Um, it went off pretty much without a hitch, even though a lot of the apples had transportation problems, but the band was incredibly tight, and we just plowed through it, and we got to sing together, and I think the audience really liked it. So, yes, it feels good. Oh, it feels amazing to play here. Uh, everybody here at M MFBF is incredibly supportive warm, friendly. I met the nicest people ever and last night the show was flawless and it was unbelievable. I don't know what to say. It's a, a terrific experience. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a great experience and all the girls are just so nice. That it's really good company and good vibes. It was great. It was great. It was great. First time with Eve's apples at stage. It was amazing. Um, this is my second year. I have uh, obviously performed with Eve's Apple uh, the year before and this year as well and it's always just, it's such a high, I can't explain it. With all the, uh, my sisters, my Apple sisters, it's the best experience ever. It's, it's so cool to be working with so many different voice types. It's incredible. It's incredible. Uh, it's a huge honor for me to be around here in all those, uh, among all these successful musicians which I even admire, you know, I'm like, whoa, and I'm amazed, and it feels amazing, it's like a dream, and I don't want, like, I don't want it to stop, like, I don't want to wake up, it feels amazing, and um, I consider myself really lucky to be here, and have this experience. <laughs> It's just a necessary evil in a way. Um, I, I do realize, like, we, we I think I said it last year too. Yeah, it's like Metal Female Voices Fest. We wouldn't just say Metal Male Voices Fest because that'd be weird. That would just be, you know, blocking. Um, but because we know we're kind of a niche, it's nice that we do have this festival and I'm grateful for it, you know. Um, I think females are gaining more traction in the bigger festivals and they are being more seen. But we're still a minority, so it's nice to have this to call our own that, okay, we have this thing. We would love for there to be a day when there's no need, when it's just metal, you know? But in the meantime, while people are getting used to the idea of a chick doing metal, and I think they're getting there, I really think they're getting there, um, we have this, and it's great, and this is, this we'll never forget this stuff. this is great. actually turned out fantastic and it brings a bunch of different styles of music together and I think that's fantastic so. no I don't think that uh, I don't think that having a, a girl as a singer it's ma it makes a different genre I mean when I hear people saying that I hear to film it film uh, female fronted metal I think of the of this I, I mean can you hear arc enemy and at the same time Evanescence it's not the same so I don't think that uh, we should put female fronted metal as a genre. Okay. It can be like rock, it can be like mm, thrust metal, death metal, symphonic metal, there are so many genres. So, so uh, I don't think it's, it should be a special category. In the end it's only human beings singing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> there are so many genres of metal and female fronted I think is just describing you know, what we are. You know, there's I think, you know, symphonic death grind and 
we're just women. Yeah. <laughs> you know? If you think that under this label you have groups like Within Temptation and Arch Enemy, which are very different, yeah. it's quite interesting that they managed to have the same label. But, you know, as long as we can play with them, I think we're fine. <laughs> It, for me, it, it's like, okay, yeah, this is a touchy subject. <laughs> no, it, it's true because, like, there is, like they say, female-fronted metal, right? But that doesn't mean that um, it all sounds the same. There's many subgenres within female-fronted metal. Um, but, I mean, I think it was coined by, actually, a uh, fem metal web scene. Uh, oh, I think the Carrie, I want to say her name was Carrie or something. She coined from Italy, coined the term, and it gave us some recognition. But now there's so much support for like female voices. Like we don't really have to call it that anymore. You know, we have so many strong um, women in metal who, are, you know, they, they front these bands, and there doesn't need to be identification by gender anymore. I feel it's at the point where it's like, you know, yeah, guys and girls do metal, so. But I mean, yeah, it's like there's no male fronted metal, but then again, male have been males have been fronting metal for you know since the beginning. It's uh, there's a few of us. In the stepping up to the plate. There's so many of us, it's like, yeah, we don't need the title anymore, in my opinion. <laughs> well, it depends. Uh, it depends how you use it, Ed, I would say. Metal is metal, you know? Whoever is playing music is music. Either it's uh, a, a girl is playing it, or either a guy is playing it, you know? Yeah. It's the same, but if you want to just uh, be more specific concerning the sound or the genre, I guess, it's more, but um, I don't think it defies, t defines us either. You know? so. I kind of wish there wasn't like a genderizing in it. To be honest, I wish it was just kind of like that's a good fucking band. That singer rips ass. You know, that's how I feel. Be, you know, instead of just being like, oh well, she's female, so she has to fit in this size. No, this guy has to fit over here. You know, like why can't it just be good singer, good band? Instead of just, it kind of, it kind of makes like almost like a, a competition between male and female, in my opinion. Actually, I, I don't really like when there is a, uh, the, you make a difference, though the music is the same, you know, S symphonic metal can be other sung by guys or by girls, and I don't like that we divide just because of the genre of the singer. I think this is a bit, so it's against open-mindedness, I guess, because you can like bands and, and the music, whoever is performing it, whether it's a girl or a guy, and I like that there is a way to support the scene and that there is a niche like this and with very, very committed fans, it's, it's really enjoyable very much, but in terms of music and open-mindedness, I'd like that we don't put female singers in a box, separated, separated to the rest of the metal. Lots of things. Um, a lot of times from him, from Sean, my husband. He's awesome. Um, I write a lot of songs about him because he's the best ever. And um, so I write about him. I write about life in general. Like I see, it's a lot of times pain, which is not a fun topic, but I see people going through things or I see pain or I have it myself. And the best way I feel like to get through that, to get rid of it, is a song. So I, I do a lot of that. And God. God's always my inspiration. It's uh, the everyday life, most of the times. 
also believe that um, in this sweet darkness that we all have inside, uh, that this is where I take my inspiration from. It's my dear darkness. Dream story. A special style? Dream stories. <laughs> For dark stuff. I find my inspiration from life events and uh, I find it from others, from situations that happen in, in the world or just locally to like friends of mine or um, it, I would say life. Life is the inspiration. <laughs> strep and I hear myself still singing it's like shut up stop singing it's like I just can't it's like it'd be like saying okay stop breathing for about an hour I, I can't do it so I'm always the mouth is always running in one way or the other and so I do think the melody is important but lyrics oh my god like I tell like I tell sometimes the guys in my band no one's singing your bass line dude in the shower okay they're not in the shower going they're singing the words they want to sing the words they want to feel it they want the story so I feel like the lyrics win every time, every time. Um, I actually, it's the melody. <laughs> I, I haven't written many lyrics. Uh, I didn't write many with Luna Mortis. Now with White Empress, um, there's a lot more of that. So I, um, when I listen to a song on the radio, I don't, I don't pay attention to the words. I just listen to the vocal line. Words to me are sort of like, things for you to put the notes on. <laughs> Some people are very about the words. To me, um, um, I'm just starting to get about that. You know, I'm, I, I, uh, I'm a new writer, kind of, so. This is a tough one. Uh, I actually believe that having both is the, is where the magic is born. Having both, have, having great lyrics and great melodies. But uh, I think that a song can be destroyed by a bad melody. So I don't know. I, I, I'm, you know, uh, I support the the idea of having a great lyrics and great melody. But in the end, it, maybe it's the melody that the people can, you know, hear, and then they, if if they like the melody, then maybe they they also read the lyrics as well. So maybe the melody is what is the invitation to the lyrics. <laughs> You're talking to two singers here. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I think you should have a good balance of both. Um, personally, I always write lyrics after the music is, is done. I know that there are also other singers that, that, singers that do the other way around. Um, but for me, it's necessary to write lyrics. It's necessary to have the, the right music that goes with them. You know, I have to say that I do write lyrics ahead of time, but like Ana Maria says, sometimes you'll have the music written and they'll change completely, but it's, uh, you know, I have a collection of things, so it's, it's great you know, sometimes to mesh the two together, but when the music is together, things can you know, Yeah, the message can be, can be stronger, yes. you know, when Without the other, because when you when you're singing, 
you can make it sound beautiful, but for some people, they make connections with what you're saying. And for some people, they're, I, I tend to be an emotional listener. When I hear someone who's singing very passionately about something, and the words behind the melody are strong as a melody, it makes the song better for me, personally. <laughs> so I think that they cannot exist without one or the other. Yes, I believe there is. Um, I would have to say what I thought is this is just, there's a culture of everybody knows each other here and they're kind of coming together like it's a commune. There's people camped outside in tents and whatnot. And I feel like that's not something I've necessarily seen of, like as much in the States. And maybe it's because in the States we have so many festivals, we have so many venues, we have so much music that you don't have to travel far. You don't have to save up all your money to go to a festival. Whereas people save all year for this. And it's all the women in battle pretty much together in one place. And there's really nothing like it. So it's, it's really awesome. And you've got so many languages being spoken. And everyone's trying to figure out what everyone's saying. And everyone, everyone just finally is like, here, let's have a beer. And that, that fixes everything. So it's it's really nice. It's, a, it's almost a metal summer camp atmosphere. And it's, it's cool. Yeah. I have to really say. 
think about this because uh, I have to say like vanilla birthday cake is just always good. <laughs> uh, chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. We've had a few votes for chocolate cake. Chocolate That's cake. Uh, pearly chocolate cake. To be oh, hazelnut. Whatever. It's my favorite. <laughs> my favorite cake. 